Hey everyone, today we are going to be revisiting UI. A few people seem to be having trouble making UI, especially submenus and grids. So in this video we're going to be making a pseudo inventory screen with a grid menu. I'd highly recommend watching my first UI tutorial to understand how to use text displayers as a menu element, as well as understanding how to use selectors. First off, if you want to follow this tutorial exactly, you want to have an inventory setup. I won't necessarily be covering how to make one in this video, but I do have two videos that are on the subject. I will put them in the description and a card up now. All you need to know for this video though is that our inventory is just made up of variables and when we have an item, we set its variable output to 1. So, to get started, we want to understand what a grid-like inventory screen is. In my case, I am modeling it off a predetermined menu screen like in Legend of Zelda or Karuna of Time. So each item has their own place, rather than being listed in the order you have picked them up. They also are listed in a grid. A grid is made up of columns and rows, or in our terms, X and Y. The best way we can achieve this is with two selectors one for X and one for Y. Now, what some people would do is use AND gates to select from the grid. However, this can make things very cluttered and uses way too many gadgets than necessary. So what we are going to do is block one selector's output and only let it access the row or column that the other selector has selected. We're going to make the X be the values that are blocked and the Y control the available outputs of X. To do this, we are going to need nodes. The amount depends on how big your grid is, but I'm building a 3x3 grid, so we want 3 nodes. Now we want to use all the outputs of the X selector and somehow make it work like an AND gate. Well, we can combine the signals with a combiner. The type of combiner you use is determined on how many elements on that layer you can select. But if you can't find the exact number, you can always use a microchip to hide unneeded inputs and outputs. Using the combiner, we can input the combined signal and block all inputs from the selector. On the other end, we can split the signal. Now using the Y selector, we can select which nodes will power on. Now we have a singular selection on the other side. First, we want to construct our display. So we need text displayers. Quite a few of them. Dreams is a bit finicky when moving them around on the screen, so I'd recommend trying to look as forward as possible and turning on a small grid. We are going to be needing these in microchips later, but we're also needing to arrange them. So pick your poison on whether opening 9 microchips to adjust them or adjust them now, and then wire them up in the microchip later. I'm going to do the wiring later. We're also going to need to highlight the text box later, so go ahead and set up the text box brightness on the second page to 10%. Since we're doing a 3x3 grid, we need 9 text displayers. Once you have them assembled in a 3x3 grid on the screen, we're going to place them in a microchip. But first, let's design it so we can copy it 9 times. What we need to know to display things properly is if this grid element is selected, and if we have an item in this slot. Also, since we're using this as an inventory screen, we also want to use it to equip the item in the slot if we have it. So, to do all this is pretty simple. We will place a node as to let us know if this element is selected. Since we are accessing a variable to detect if we have an item, we'll place a variable modifier set to get. And since we are also detecting if the element is used, we can put a wireless receiver down, and a wireless transmitter connected to the use button on the controller, making sure that they are connected wirelessly. Once we have all our gadgets in place, we can copy our microchip 8 more times, place the text displayers in them, and arrange them neatly. Then connect all the outputs of the splitters properly. Inside each chip, we have a pretty much identical wiring procedure. We can use the selection input to highlight the text displayer. To do this, we will plug the selection node into the text box brightness input on the second page of the text displayer. The brightness should be set to 10%, and when you plug in the wire, it should set it automatically to modulate, which will highlight it when it's selected. Now, we have the UI selection grid. It doesn't really do much yet, however, as you can see, it functions and we can scroll through with the D-pad, if you have that set up as per the previous tutorials. It's actually pretty easy to get it to function as an inventory screen from here. 
Using the variable modifier, we can turn on another text gadget with an emoji or emoticon or, in my case, ASCIART to symbolize the item for the slot if we have it. We can use an AND gate to connect the variable modifier and the selection node, as well as the wireless receiver to detect if the element has been used or selected. From there, connect the AND gate to whatever you're using to equip the player's items or weapon to set it to the item you have in this slot. And now, as you can see, I'm picking up items in the world, and I am able to equip them using this inventory screen that we have made. I hope you all liked this video. If you have any suggestions for a tutorial, let me know in the comments. I hope you all like this new video format as well. I'm putting in a lot of effort into it, trying to make sure the videos are as short as possible, as well as conveying all the needed information. If I missed anything that you are not understanding in the tutorial, go ahead and leave a comment. I'll try to answer. Um, as well as just leave any additional feedback in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.